Hi there, folks. Welcome back to another episode of Michael in the Backyard. Today we're on the GMC 2015 GMC Terrain. It has a severe exhaust leak, as you just heard at the start of this video. Uh, it's severe. It's kind of weird. It gets a little quieter at highway speeds. At idle, when it's got the lower brrrr, it actually will make a rumble in the car that's not awesome. So that's the one thing that's making this car seem a little junkier. Than it really is because this car is in really good shape. What does it look like? Looks like one of these. And it shows. I just saw it. I swear I just saw it. It said, oh, here's the inlet side. And interesting. They don't label the outlet, but. I guess if you're doing this, if you if you have only two holes, one's an inlet, the other one must be the outlet. All right. Now, I don't have a lift, so I'm not sure how good this is going to go. So what my plan is over here, I'll put the old, the old Walker Texas Ranger muffler right here. Quiet Flows SS. Woo! Gonna be so quiet. My other one, I'm pretty sure, has a split right down this side right here. So we're gonna have to get this thing up off the ground so I can get underneath there and do some surgical-like work underneath it. And how do I accomplish that? Well, I'm gonna see if I can put a ramp underneath the back tire and the front tire and drive it up on it. Now I'm gonna back it up a little bit Actually, no, I'm not. I want this a little further up in the shop this time. I don't need to work under the hood. So, now one fella left a comment to me. He said, oh, this exhaust leak that you got on this vehicle is definitely coming from the flex pipe. Well, I would have thought that at first too, but I went underneath it and ran my hand down the exhaust while it was running and I could feel all this air coming out of the side of the muffler and absolutely nothing coming around the flex pipe. Flex pipe might go, but let's get the muffler done. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever done this before. Two ramps on one side of the car. Let's see if we can make it happen. And just like that, we got some serious ground clearance under here. Let's get the old creeper out and creep under it. I'm curious what we can see. We got some bright light. Creeper time. In the video where I first brought this vehicle home, yeah, we got clampage there. What do we got on the back side of this muffler? No clampage at all. That's gonna suck. All right. Well, the good news is I can unclamp it here. But yeah, right here you can see moisture and that's where it's split and all the noise is coming out of right over here. Just kind of looking things over with you. Looks like that pipe. Huh. Huh, huh, huh. Might be a little more difficult than I want it to be. Pipe's all flat on here. Round at the very end there. PB blast the crap out of that and see if we can get this separated from that. And then... Quite honestly, down here, we'll probably see if we can death wheel it right up by the muffler here. We can take these loose and get this thing to drop down on me a little bit so I can work with it and see what I got to do to get maybe an adapter from here to the muffler. I don't know. 
Well, this muffler is just a touch longer. And if I flip it, flip it over, it looks like everything will fit where it's supposed to. All right, now we're gonna jump into a little bit of time lapse. As you can see here, this clamp was very stubborn. Uh, I beat on it, I bent the screw over. I'm like, okay, let's get the death wheel out. Let's get after this thing. And it was actually tack welded on top. As you can see, it was bended around here. It was stuck up there actually. So I'm like, okay, we're just cutting this joker all the way off. So we cut it all the way off on both ends and uh, got this muffler freed from the pipe. Now the muffler I do have is just a little bit longer than this muffler. Uh, we ended up doing a little testing, seeing how things are gonna look and fit and uh, trying to get some measurements eventually. So we cut this pipe off a little bit more. Actually, it's a hanger. I cut it back a little more so I had a little room to work. There was plenty of weld on there, plenty of hanger there. We're cleaning up the ends a little bit. Just kind of getting a good eyeball as to what can I do next? So as you can see here, I cut this off, put a new wheel on, cut this off because it was like, it had a band on it and on the outside and it had a piece on the inside as well, as you'll discover later. I knew I had plenty of pipe there to play with. I knew I had the muffler, had a little extra link to it to play with, so we went from there. And this took me about an hour and a half to get all this done. Now I got the old caliper out. We're taking some measurements. And I tell you, this, these measurements were, measurements were all over the place. We had a, you know, a 16th difference between this and that, and an eighth inch difference between this and that on each end type of thing. I'm like, how in the heck am I gonna get this to work? So I went out to the old shed behind the house, behind the shop here, and cut me some rings. Now as you can see here, there's a ring inside this that reduced the pipe down just a little bit. And so I saw that and I'm like, well, I'll just make my own rings like you see here. I cut some pieces and I split it and I can squeeze it in there and do a little more grinding, get it to cut, make it so I can cut it down just a little bit more, squeeze it back in there. Yeah, tap, tap, tap. Then I got a nice little sleeve in there, right? So then I started doing it for the other side. Same kind of thing. I can put these sleeves in. The nice thing about these sleeves is they're gonna give me a backing for welding. Um, and it's not gonna reduce it because actually the, the muffler itself reduced down even about two to three times as thick, uh, worth of thickness as these sleeves were. So it wasn't gonna inhibit any of the performance uh, as far as the, how it, how it, you know, how the muffler worked and how the exhaust got out of the car. So now we got both ends with some sleeves. I actually ended up shortening the muffler up about two inches on each end because I didn't need it. It was extra long anyway. Uh, I took advantage of that and put the sleeve inside there. Here I am fitting it a little bit more and get everything to work. Uh, a little back and forth, back and forth. But finally I got it to where, oh cool, it's gonna work. That's how it's gonna be in place. I'm planning on welding it in, as you can see. So we first, uh, before I hooked up the front side, I went tack the back side in, let it droop down so I could actually get at it and weld it all the way around. And it's, you know, turn your welder down, do some little thin weld. I don't like pipe clamps per se. I'd rather weld it in place. Uh, nice thing is you get a good seal all the way around instantly. So we got the back side welded. And then proceeded to weld the front side. Got it tacked in place and then started welding it the rest of the way around and until I was completely satisfied with how it looked. Let's hear how it sounds now. Give her a listen.
Success! We got the muffler installed. Now, you might have witnessed some unorthodox stuff going on underneath there, but I hope the guy you know, lets you watch a time lapse and, and voice over for me. Clued you in on what was going on. But it's quiet. It's so quiet now. It's, a, it's like a whole new car. I don't know why people drive around with a muffler that's leaking when it's really not that expensive. Even, even if you take it somewhere and it costs you $250. It's worth it just to keep your, you know, your mood in a good mood because that's irritating noise. Uh-oh. He's popping the hood again. Well, I'm going to show you. We've got a new air filter. Let's go ahead and replace this air filter with a, you got it, Napa Gold. This one's part number 927. Nope. <laughs> Nine seven two seven. I hope they gave me the right one. Looks like the right shape. Out with the nasty and whoa, in with the new. Now she's gonna breathe a lot better. Now I pick up another half a mile per gallon. You'll feel that uh, squeeze down just a little bit because that rubber gasket this there, like foam. Oh, it hit the floor. Thank goodness. One air cleaner expertly installed. Well, folks, that concludes this video. We have the muffler in. We, we made a lot of headway on this car. Uh, we got the new muffler installed. You might have seen I put a sleeve in there. And the inside of the exhaust, guess what? There was already a sleeve from the factory in there. The same thickness as what I put in. And I just used that for a backer inside. So when I welded around it, it would lock it in place and it wouldn't burn through so easy. And we got nice hangers on both sides. It's well supported. We should be good to go for many, many thousands of miles. It is a, uh, so what do we, let's recap. Dealer ripoff fix. We put new VVT solenoid valves in there that control the cam timing. We did oil change, transmission filter change, or transmission fluid change. Uh, muffler change, we did uh, air filter and uh, oil, did I say that already? But done a lot of things to keep this thing running for many, many more miles. Now there are some people out there that said, oh, your timing chain is going to go. These things are notorious for it. I, I would agree. Uh, what I, from what I've read and everybody's had complaints about, they do have that as an issue, but it's only an issue when you don't do the proper maintenance on your vehicle. Now. There again, I'm kind of a I'm kind of a maintenance freak, if you were. My vehicles and my stuff might not look the prettiest, but you can darn sure bet it's been well maintained. Uh, I'm not always one that's always washing my things, scrubbing my things down, wiping them down. Uh, it's an A to B car is an A to B thing to me. I've got an automatic car wash I drive through. I buy a subscription because in Iowa, the salt and crap they use on the roads, you want to be able to wash that off on a regular basis. And then I park it inside, and so I don't, you know, things don't freeze shut. Enough said about that. But uh, I watched one fella. I can't remember his name. I wish I would. I'd give him a shout out. I watched him change a timing chain in this. About three hundred and some odd dollars worth of parts. About the same amount of uh, parts it cost me to do a Subaru to, to do my Lexus. Uh, same amount of parts to do a timing belt. Only timing chains run a little longer. Now, one thing I noticed on his, it was kind of cool. You know, right now, everything seems to be working fine. I'm not worried about the timing chain at this point in time. Uh, I'm pretty sure, looking at the oil that I changed out of this thing, uh, it was dirty. It was due for an oil change. The good thing was, it was down to, he only driven 30 extra miles since Midas didn't change their oil for him. And I'm going to call out names. I don't care. You know, it's not slanderous if it's true. 
So they got charged, they confirmed, they got charged for an oil change. That obviously did not happen. They just reset the mileage monitoring system to 100%. And when I got it, it was at 95%. And uh, what well, should have taken more than 30 miles, but depending on how it's running recently, uh, it maybe, I don't know the percentages why it would have went down faster, but it was just kind of interesting. Anyway, uh, I think there's a situation where the, if you change the oil on a regular basis, keep those tensioners and that tensioner, there's a big old arm in there that has a, like a, I don't know what kind of plastic it has on it, slippery plastic and high wear resistant plastic in there that keeps the tension on the timing chain. Now, the interesting part is the gut feller I watched, you could hear, he said you could hear this little ting, 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 ting sound, this metal contacting sound in the first, oh, 10 to 15, or 10 to 20 seconds, I think he said, maybe 30 seconds worth of running at startup and then it went away. Well, I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, maybe it's just because oil got up around things, but when he pulled the timing cover off, there's two chains in there. There's, there's one that goes up over to cams and there's another one that does other chain stuff. That one was actually making contact with the cover. So it was kind of interesting, but it was running fine. So it's kind of interesting. It's kind of like the squealers that you have on your brakes when they wear down far enough that you hear them going, you know, squealing and it tells you, hey, it's time to put new pads or new shoes or new something. Do get your brakes serviced. Uh, that little ting ting sound would, I would hear that for the first time, for instance, and I go, hmm, we'll park it, we'll get a timing chain in it, but I'm not hearing that. This thing starts up dead silent. Runs like a doggone sewing machine. And uh, now it's quiet with this muffler we installed on it. I'm excited to go drive it now. Once we get dug out, we had, in a previous video, I might've showed you the snow we got, about a foot of snow. We've gotten at least minimum 10 inches the four days later. This mother nature is dumping on Iowa right now. Uh, it's like we've gotten enough snow in the past two, a uh, past week is more snow than we gotten in the past two years. So. Uh, you know, time to pay the piper, I suppose, right? But uh, no, this uh, maintenance, you know, air filters it, neglected. People don't think about them, you know. And and then you got to find yourself a reputable mechanic. I can't stress that enough. If you don't do it, I do these videos so people can learn to do things themselves, so they can watch somebody do it. Because you can read a work instruction all day long. The most people are very visual when they see something. They're like, oh, because you can read verbiage. And it can mean something and you try to picture in your head what's going on but when you see it you know they say you know a word's worth a word a picture's worth a thousand words a video's worth a million words in my opinion when it comes to trying to figure things out i go to youtube university on a regular basis you know i watched uh scotty kilmer is one of my favorite people to watch on youtube when it comes to understanding cars when his feeds pop up i'll watch it because he's usually you know wanting to figure out, uh, let people know he doesn't charge for any of his stuff he does, uh, on YouTube. And, uh, somebody ripped him off not too recently. TikTok and is using his videos and trying to sell cheap junk. Uh, I wish those people that were thieving and ripping off. Uh, I don't want one of them in front of me. That's all I got to say about that. Uh, I might not, it might not turn out well for them, but the cool part is you know, I, oh, somebody just left a comment as well uh, on the previous video. It says, well, you know, I'm reading about all this stuff and reading my comments and stuff that people are leaving. You go, and I can't believe, you know, you spend your time looking for a car and you find yourself a car you really like. And then you learn about all the crap that could go wrong with it. That's true. You know, this one has 133,000 miles on it. It's got a lot of miles left in it. I'll guarantee you that. I'll guarantee you as soon as it leaves the driveway... You know, with in somebody else's hands, they own it. But I've done everything. I, there is no ghost that I'm aware of hiding out in this car, waiting to scare somebody or give some cost somebody a lot of money. Uh, I couldn't, in good conscience, sell a vehicle or something that wasn't running right. Same way with my outboards. If my outboards aren't running right, when I sell them, they don't get sold. They stay here. They may become parts outboards after that. But. Uh, yeah, the feller said you spend you spend the money on your vehicle that you like, and then you find out these things. Now, he also made a comment about quality, the domestic cars and their quality. Well, used to be back in the 90s, uh, you know, in the late 80s, early 90s, you know, Ford and Chevy really started, you know, bringing up their quality game. You know, Toyota was setting a pace. 
And there again, J.D. Powers and stuff will rank Lexus above Toyota. And Lexus is Toyota, but Toyota just, you know, keeps raising their own bar. But in the 90s, the quality between Ford and Chevy was outstanding. I had Luminas, I had Berettas, and those cars would just go and go and go, and they were well built. The quality of it was there. And uh, Ford, same way. Ford, you know, Ford F-150 was the number one selling. May still be, but I don't know why. Uh, selling truck in the nation. The quality, and there's been an apology announced by the, the what is it, the president of Ford saying, we apologize, but it's going to take us years to get our quality back. We didn't lose our quality overnight. We're not going to get it back overnight. So they know they've misstepped. Um, that's what happens when you let your bean counters make the decisions when it's price over quality. You know, if you, if you have a good quality product and you, and you deliver it on time and you service it well, the profits will come. But saving 10 cents here, 8 cents there, buying a buck cheaper part on an entire car that's going to go out in 30,000 miles, you know, or just get you outside the warranty, it's a, it's a, bad, it's a bad game plan. There's not a lot of companies nowadays that like to play the long game. When I say the long game, you know, there's a lot of companies wants their ROI or return on investment in six months because they're, you know, a capital venturist type company might own them. Uh, they they don't make the long term gain. You see it happen across multiple companies, and it's like play for the long game. You know, what's your three year, five year plan? Don't look like don't try to get rich in six months. Try to be around a long time. Try to give your customers a quality product for a long time. Build the reputation. Because you can, there again, the trust account. My dad would give the, the old speech on the trust account. You can sit there for years and years and years and do the right thing for years and years and years and keep making deposits into this trust account. But it only takes one mistake to make a full and complete withdrawal on that trust account. And then it takes even longer to get that trust back. And that's what I think these big... Uh, the big three are having trouble with right now with, uh, they got to earn people's trust back by having these things that are, are problematic. These transmissions, the chronic transmission. Oh, Chevy always has this chronic transmission problem there. Oh, Ford always has this Chrysler always has that. Stop it. Make it go away. Okay. I'm gonna step down off my soapbox. Uh, thank you guys for watching and, and, uh, don't be afraid to leave comments. Don't be afraid to leave your opinions down in the, uh, in the old doodaddy thing. So, how much money do I have wrapped up in this car right now? Well, I've done, there again, I've, it took me $40 gallons worth, or $40 worth of fuel to go get this car. The VVT stuff with the uh, transmission fluid was $127. I'm looking at my list right here. Uh, what else did I do? Uh, plugs, and, plugs and muffler was $107. Actually, it was $89, not $107, $89. Car wash I put on it was $10. You know, we got... A little over 300 it's under 350 dollars let's call it 335 340 but i put that kind of money into it and i feel pretty good about the car i got one left thing to do and that'll be on another video the tire man tpms tire pressure management system is not functioning because the batteries in the tires are bad or dead yes your tires have batteries in them they're in the valve stem on most of them and it basically monitors the tire pressure they're usually the batteries are good for anywhere from five to ten years this these these are original this is a nine-year-old vehicle uh when i picked it up i had the left front tire had pressure showing and so it must have been on the verge of working not working because it showed it and the other three were blank on the screen and then next time i was playing around with it they were all out i tried to do the reprogram thing and the batteries are dead it wouldn't work so i've got to order some new valve stems with the battery the tire tpms tpm tire tmps tire tpms wow acronyms world surrounded with acronyms uh but i'm gonna order four new ones those put them in myself show you how to do it and show you how to reprogram it uh on this at least on this 2015 uh gmc terrain cool now those of you that follow my channel the 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 good followers and the the ones i shouldn't say the good followers the people that are always following i got me new got me new power steering hose from napa for the old big mo uh, still waiting on two tie rod ends they're being shipped to usps blah. and they'll be here and i'm this weather we got outside we got blizzard like conditions most of iowa roads have been shut down today 
Uh, we're supposed to have high high winds, blizzard conditions, and stuff. But you don't want to hear that. You guys are in, you guys are in Arizona. You guys are enjoying it right now. Uh, you got your you know you're out of you're getting into winter, which is would be our spring and fall type weather, which would be awesome. But it is what it is. I don't know why people always say it is what it is, because everything is what it is. There's not much that is it was it ain't. All right. It's Michael saying if it ain't broke, fix it till it is. Leave a comment. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See ya on the next video if I'm lucky. Uh, I feel blessed. Thank you and goodbye.